Yo, Elliot, I'm 22, and for my entire life, I had the same group of friends. In my youth, I was the leader, and I led them down a degenerate path. <laughs> That's easy to do, by the way. During the last two years, I made it a top priority to facilitate change and self-improve. Unfortunately, as adults, my friends are stuck. They're not on my level, and for that reason, I feel guilty for taking, talking about my passion, fitness, or confidence in front of them. They lack ambition and are generally very comfortable with life. I've been crushing my goals, and although I want nothing more but to lift, uplift them, I feel they weigh me down. When it comes to making new friends, I find it difficult meeting people on my level. What should I do? So you say that you were a leader. So let's, let's stick with that. I like that, right? You were a leader then and you're a leader now. Some of us are just, that's, we're just born leaders, right? Like I was born the first in my family and, you know, all these different reasons why it's just like guys like you, guys like me, not everybody. And there's nothing wrong with that, but we just have this, people follow us. People want to listen to us. People, and you're that kind of guy. Now, I've been exactly where you are, and I just want to draw some parallels. First, I must say, it's always easy to lead people down a degenerate path because that's what our fallen nature craves. If you lead people down the wrong path and they willingly go with you, or if you have more of them, lots of them, willingly following you, there may be a good reason why. It's because it's pleasing. Wow, yeah, let's do that thing that feels real good, but ultimately leads to hell, right? And so it's very easy to lead people to hell. I even said it before with regard to last lesson uh, that the road to hell is paved with good intentions because it's always about, you know, it feels good, right? Good intentions feels good. It's good to our pride, right? So leading someone down a degenerate path is, I don't say beat yourself up about it, but notice it, but also recognize that they were, if they weren't going to follow you down the degenerate path, they're going to follow somebody down the degenerate path because the degenerate path is so damn easy. It's so easy to be degenerate, right? In fact, I would venture to say that it was the blind leading the blind. You were a quote, quote, quote leader because maybe they were following your lead, but you were just doing what the culture tells you to do. The culture indoctrinates degeneracy from day one. From day one, they're telling us all the wrong things to do. Our culture has been subverted fully and thoroughly, and there's no way up from here. I mean, there, this is it. We've hit rock bottom, right? We've hit rock. I don't think it could get any worse, but maybe it will. So anyway, the whole culture is going down the degenerate path. Don't beat yourself up. They were going to go anyway. But you kind of you're waking up. That's pretty cool. You're 22, starting to wake up. That's not bad, man. He says, my top priority is to facilitate change and self-improve. Unfortunately, as adults, my friends are stuck. So the very first thing I want you to do is not take personal responsibility for leading them down that degenerate path because you were ignorant. It was the blind leading the blind. You didn't know what you're doing. But now you're leveling up and you're being a little timid about the new you. And I think that's okay because you need to actually fully embody that new you. And two years is not enough. You know, it's, it, I, I have to use myself as an example because I look at old Elliot, like a lot of people do. Well, what happened to old Elliot, they say. And I listened to some of the things I was saying, and I always had good intentions. From day one, I had, a good inten I had good intentions. But I listened to some of the things that I said maybe 10 years ago, and I realized it lacked wisdom. And I'm like... Yeah, that sounded really good, Elliot, but that ain't true, right? It took me 10, 15 years to realize, oh, well, that feels good. That sounds good. It's very pleasing to the ear and gets me millions of views. <laughs> but the fact is that it ain't true because it's easy. People followed me. I was saying things that were tickling their ears. I was tickling their ears. I don't tickle people's ears anymore, <laughs> right? And as a result, nobody follows me. But difference between you and me, not that nobody follows me, you guys follow me. I, in fact, it's only the people that matter that are around me right now. This was a, board of, a part of a pruning process, right? It's like there's 10% left and this is my 10%. You're a part of my 10%. You gotta be, willing, you gotta be accepting of that also because as you start growing up, you start recognizing in life, in yourself and the world around you that 
the right path is a narrow path. It's not an easy path. The degenerate path is a wide path. Droves will follow you. The righteous path is a narrow path and only one, and only like for me, 10%, only a few are going to be able to tread that with you because now you're saying things about uh, fitness and confidence, different things like that, right? You know, working out, you say they're lazy, right? You're crushing your goals and they have none, right? Because you're doing things that are on the narrow path. You can't expect people that were with you on the wide path to just drop everything and jump on the narrow path with you. The difference between you and me now here is that you say, for some reason, I feel guilty for talking about my passion. Well, I'll say, that, that I'll say this. It's not necessarily the difference between you and I is not the guilt. It's the time. It took me a long time. You know how long I took off from YouTube? Because I was growing up. I stopped making YouTube videos and it was, it was sporadic for you know, maybe three or four years, right? Between 2015, 16, 17, 18. 19, it wasn't until like 2020, I really started making these videos again in 2020. Five years, it took me five years because for five years like you, I was still cooking. I was still working things out. I was still trying to figure things out. And you say, I feel guilty for talking about my passions. If I were to make a whole lot of videos during that transition phase for me, I'd feel guilty because I'm like, I don't think I really know what I'm saying. I, I was more in a confused state. Now, I'm very confident. <laughs> right? I'm very confident now about the things that I'm saying. You might just need to spend a little bit more time on this path and really get your own solid footing before you start guiding people down it. Remember, it's a narrow path. The path that I'm leading you guys down with this program is a narrow path. I can't be shaky on my feet and a, and a newbie myself and say, hey, guys, come follow me. Because not only am I going to feel guilty, because in my heart of hearts, I realize I'm not qualified to say these things yet. I'm not qualified to go there yet in good conscience that I'm leading them down the right path. You know, it was, it's easy to lead people pat down a degenerate path when you don't know that it's degenerate. But when you recognize, oh, man, I may have led those people astray, you start, you start being a little bit more cautious about what you say. Remember I told you, like, you know, apologizing for some of the videos that I've made the past couple days uh, or would have come out for the past couple days because I realized, man, I wasn't fully present with those. So I almost feel like now I feel guilty because I'm like, wow, I'm, not, I'm walking people down this narrow path and I just dropped a banana slip, banana peel there. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa you, that's not, I got I to gotta clean that up. I can't make those kinds of mistakes in my videos because I have that much more responsibility to the people that are listening to me than when I had a million people follow me down the wide path. I had no responsibility towards those people. I was just saying what they like to hear. I like to hear it. So I was just saying what they like to hear and I like to hear it and I'm just tickling ears. Now, I don't have room for that. And so it's the same with you. You upped your level. Every time you up your level, your, your path gets narrower and you gotta be a little bit more careful about inviting people along with you. You say they lack ambition and they're generally very comfortable in life because the path is, is wide. My advice ultimately for you would be continue to walk your path longer. Like I said, it was five years before I started coming back as confident as I, I'm, I'm more confident than I was back then, although I was very prideful and confident back then, but I had to take a break just like you did. You say in the last two years, you started changing, facilitating change, you say, right? Well, when you start facilitating change, Think about it as like a, a, a butterfly, right? Like you walking around as a, as a, as a centipede, right? What, what becomes a butterfly? Them little worms, right? Them little furry worms. <laughs> caterpillar. You walking around as a caterpillar, right? And you doing caterpillar things. What, is, what can a caterpillar do? A caterpillar got all them legs. It can walk wherever it wants. And it could be, it's very easy to follow a caterpillar, right? Caterpillar just slithering on his belly. He ain't going anywhere. If anybody wants to follow a caterpillar, you ain't going to, first of all, it's going to be slow. It ain't going to be too challenging, right? What is a caterpillar doing? He's going. But that caterpillar, God has bigger plans for that caterpillar. So what does God do before he lets that caterpillar take flight? He puts him into a chrysalis, a little cocoon. Nobody following the cocoon when he's in the cocoon. Nobody even see that guy. Because you know what's happening? Change transformation transformation is happening inside that 
cocoon, right? I don't know if they call it cocoon or chrysalis. I grew up calling it cocoon, but they changed the words when I got older. Inside the chrysalis, quiet. What's The caterpillar is out munching on leaves and shit, right? Doing stuff. But when he goes into that chrysalis, shh, quiet. You don't hear nothing. You don't see something, nothing. You don't even know he's there. But when the time is ripe, what happens? Boof. Big, beautiful wings come out. And start flying away. Fly, and then, you know what happens when butterflies fly? Everybody want to chase the butterfly. My dog sees a butterfly, he wants to chase the butterfly. My children see a butterfly, they want to chase the butterfly. Even when I see a butterfly, I'm like, oh, I don't see that butterfly. Where's that butterfly going? Beautiful butterfly. People start following you after the cocoon. Right now, I think you're still in the cocoon. Be in your cocoon. Your friends are still caterpillars. You can't inspire them until you get your wings. And look, I could be wrong, but two years, right? You're 22. I, I know I'm not wrong, <laughs> right? But everybody's different. You're 22, you're still very young. It's only been two years. Yeah, you're just getting started. Give yourself a few more years. I say by age 25, right? All of a sudden, your wings will start to come out, and people are going to notice. And so some of those friends, they're very happy being caterpillars. They're going to stay caterpillars. Maybe all of them. But some of those other friends are going to come and say, hey, man, I really I notice what you're doing in your life. I see how things are unfolding for you. Tell me, what, it is, what is it that you're doing? And you can't tell him. You cannot tell him what you're doing because you don't even know what you're doing. But you can inspire him to go into that chrysalis. Hey man, I went through a period of transformation in my life. I had to sort of step back a little bit. You may have noticed that I wasn't around as much. Nowadays you see me out here and I'm doing big things. I didn't forget about you guys. The same way that I had to go through a transformation period, I guarantee that you're gonna need to go through a little bit of a transformation yourself. I'm gonna introduce you to some new ideas. I'm gonna introduce you to some new resources. I'm going to give you some things that you can go home and do, but bottom line is I can't change you. You can't change you. Time will change you. God will change you. But you got to start facilitating that, like you say here, by some of the decisions that you make. Some of the best decisions you can make is, like we talk about in this program, stop, right? Cut off all the effeminate addictions, right? Become sort of an ascetic in your life, right? Stop watching porn and masturbating. Stop smoking and, and, and excessively drinking and doing all these things, addicted to video games, right? Once you start doing all that, once you get rid of all those things in your life, it's almost like that caterpillar, it, he, when he picks himself up off the ground and goes up into the cocoon, because now he's no longer engaged in munching on leaves and basking in the sun no he goes into a he goes into a a dark wet weird place a catabasis of sorts that's why i call it, you guys watch my my strength camp youtube channel look up catabasis elliot hulse catabasis that was that was me as an artist because <laughs> i kind of an artist too recognizing where i am and letting people know without saying it with my voice Go watch my series, Katabasis, K-A-T-A-B-I-S, Katabasis. It's a Greek word that means going down. I, I made that series in like 2016. Going down. And so you're still in a, in a going down. It may not feel like it because you're crushing your goals and things are, things are happening. But I don't think you're in any position just yet to start uh, dragging your friends down that narrow path. I don't think they're ready. I don't think you're ready. So the best thing you could do is continue to do what you're doing, bro. Continue to facilitate that change in yourself. Because the only way that the only way anybody's gonna follow that butterfly is if he stops doing what he's doing, goes into himself, and allows nature, God, to transform him. We don't transform by ourselves. I want you to understand that. I know that it's pleasing to the ego, things that I may have even said in the past. And I'm sort of still wrestling with this a little bit. I'm not 100% confident. I believe it, but I'm not in my 
expression, 100% confident. But I think all this talk of self-improvement, I think is a little false. I think we can have an intention and we could even have insight as to the butterfly that we'll become. But just like that butterfly don't make himself a butterfly, instead he just stops doing what he's doing and God takes over, I think that's what happens to us. You stop doing the things that no longer serve you, but you can't just become the butterfly after that. You have to stop, go in, hang it up, right? Isn't that what the, isn't that what the chrysalis does? It hangs, it's just hanging there. Hang it up. Hang, that's a great metaphor for just hanging everything up and then let God effectuate that change in your life. Anyway, just stuff to think about, dudes. Uh, I hope that helps you. Young man, I'd love to see that you're on a great path. And don't worry about your friends. If, you, if they're weighing you down, it's because two things. You're trying to lift them up. That's the problem, right? If I go to the gym and I try to lift something up <laughs> that don't want to be lifted up, it's going to weigh me down, right? If I go in there and I throw 800 pounds on a barbell, it's going to weigh me down because I'm not strong enough to lift it up. Right now, you're not trying, I don't think you're strong enough to lift them up. So you, they're weighing you down because you're trying to lift them up. <laughs> right? As you said, I want nothing more but to lift them up. But they're weighing me down because you're not strong enough yet. And that's okay. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.